Hey guys, this is Tyler Cristopoli with the Lifestar Training and Education Center, and I want to talk about how to obtain a preductal SpO2. If you remember, last year we went over neonatal resuscitation, and we gave everybody a neonatal resuscitation kit for their ambulance, and in that kit is this guideline sheet. Now, up in here in the corner, we have something called target preductal SpO2s, and we talked about putting the pulse ox on the right hand and measuring that preductal SpO2. But why do we put that pulse ox on the right hand? Well, to fully understand that, we need to understand neonatal circulation and some of those adaptations that a fetus makes going through birth. So let's start at the placenta. So the mom's got her blood, the baby's got its blood, and those gases, the oxygen comes over, we have oxygenated rich blood leaving the placenta, and it attaches through the ductus venosus to the inferior vena cava. So we got this oxygenated blood coming up the inferior vena cava and it goes right inside the right atrium and if we think about how an adult circulation would work it would go from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle out the pulmonary arteries and to the lungs. But babies don't use their lungs because we said they're getting that oxygen from their mom. So if something happens up here in the lungs, we get something called hypoxic vasoconstriction. And this hypoxic vasoconstriction takes all those arteries and arterioles and makes them really, really tiny. So when this blood coming up through here hits it, it's gonna meet resistance. And if we meet resistance in the pulmonary arteries, we're gonna meet resistance in the right ventricle. And if we meet resistance in the right ventricle, we're gonna meet resistance in the right atrium. So we got all this pressure building up right here. So one of the adaptations the heart makes in, uh, in the circulation is it allows a secret passageway to go from the right atrium to the left atrium through this little flap here called the foramen ovale. So the foramen ovale allows that blood to go right over to the right, the left atrium, down the mitral valve to the left ventricle, and then go back out into the systemic circulation. Now the other thing that happens is some of the blood's gonna have to go to the lungs because we do have cells in the, in the lungs that need the blood, but it's very little. It's like a trickle that'll actually go through the lungs because of that tight vasoconstriction. So what happens is, is that blood that goes from the right atrium to the right ventricle and out the pulmonary arteries, it meets resistance in here. There's another adaptation, and that's this tiny little uh, connection from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. And this right here is called the ductus arteriosus and so this that's this little area right here and so the blood can go straight from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and then into the systemic circulation so here's why we call it a preductal spo2 because before you get to that ductus arteriosus you have the brachiocephalic artery which is the first branch coming off of the aorta so that brachiocephalic artery then turns into the right subclavian artery and goes down that right arm. So if we measure the pulse ox on that right arm, we're getting that oxygenated blood before it mixes in with the unoxygenated blood from the ductus arteriosus. So if we look at this right here, the pulse ox coming on the right arm should be a lot higher than say the pulse ox on your left foot or uh, some other extremity, that right arm is going to be the highest. And that's the one we want to check because we want to see how that ductus arteriosus is doing. Now, if we want to see if it closed yet, it usually closes somewhere between 12 to 24 hours. What we can do is we can measure the pulse ox on the right hand and then measure the pulse ox on the left foot. Look at that gradient. As that gradient gets smaller and smaller, that means this is getting thinner, thinner and thinner until it finally closes. Once it closes, then your pulse ox should be the same on your right hand and your left foot. So this is part one of a three-part series on neonatal circulation.